name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you praise and glory. You are just thank God again for what we are. Thank Him for bringing you here today. That the purpose why God brought us. That the purpose why God brought you and high. I'd like you to just thank God first and foremost. Until you thank God for a thing, it doesn't manifest in your life. Until you thank God for a thing, it doesn't manifest. So thank Him. As your heart is open, I believe God is about to speak to you in a moment. Uh, for a change of level in your career and your business, God is about to, you know, make a new turn. Your coming here is for a turning, for a turnaround experience. I'd like you to get your heart set, because I believe the next 15, 20 minutes will be a most profound time. Father, we say thank you. Lord, we give you praise. We give you all the glory in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we say thank you once again. As we go forth into your word in a moment from now, Lord, guide us, lead us, Direct us at the hand. Let all the glory and honor be to your name. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, that's about it, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, I'd like everybody to listen with the rapt attention. Everything suspended um, for the next 15 minutes. And I'll be sharing with you some insights, I believe, um, you know, will transform the way you do what you do, will transform how you deliver results, and will transform every step that you take on a daily basis. One thing I need you to recognize um, is the fact that you can only go as far as you know in life. So I will share with us briefly on what I've captioned, mastering the unavoidable variables of life. Mastering the unavoidable variables. Now in life there are variables. Um, I wish it's constant. There are things that you never plan for that just appear from nowhere. But you must be ready. In life, life is an adventure in opportunities. Let me start by saying and reminding you that life is an adventure in opportunities. So what that means is that every day you and I wakes up, there's an opportunity to go forward, to break new grounds. So it's important to recognize that Life in itself is an adventure and opportunity, but you must master the variables. You must master the variables. Now, why that is very important is that many of you expect life to just go one way, but life say, no, I'm not meant to be that way. There are variables in life. And what I'll be sharing with you briefly, this is a one-part series in many series, on mastering the variables, the, the unavoidable variables of life. Now, let me first and foremost recognize the fact that life in itself operates in seasons. So there are mastery required for each season of our life. Paul said, when I was young, I talked like a young man. When I was old, I talked like an adult. Now, there are things you must recognize that they are in phases. Somebody said, men are in sizes. Life is in phases. So there are things you must master. Otherwise, life will become miserable. Many of us are struggling, perhaps, in our career and business today because there are some things you must master. Until you master them, life won't deliver what you're looking forward to. Number one thing you must master is you must master the seasons of life. The seasons of life. You know, the Bible talks about life. He said, you know, to everything under, under, under heaven, what? There are time and there are seasons. A time to sleep, a time to wake. If you don't know how to master this time, you'll be sleeping when you should be awake. You'll be running when you should be resting. That's why many people, they are wondering, but I'm working hard. You are majoring, you are majoring. I'm minoring, you're minoring. If you understand time and seasons, if you don't understand my sitting, you'll be majoring in your minor. And then minoring in your major. Why? Because you lack understanding of time and seasons. So there's time to gather knowledge to start a career. There's a time to what? To begin to move that career from where that small state into a big state. You must know when to move to the next level in your career and business. That's one grace I thank God for my life. I know when to move. Praise the Lord. Get out. Oh, I, I can tell she's new to AMP. You don't, you don't move when we're moving. It. Praise the Lord. Now, life is too serious 
to be majoring in the wrong thing at the right time. So you must master the season first. As a young man out of the university, for example, and then it's time for your youth service. Many people think it's time for play. No, it's the most foundational year of your life. If you get it right that year, then your life, you are setting the stage for next levels. It's a time to prepare for the world of work, for example. In life, there are what we call winter of life. When things are not, it's cold. You are lonely. You are wondering, has God left me alone? There are things to do to master the winter of life. There are times we call them spring, when there are opportunities all, over the, all around you. You must know what to do to catch all the opportunities. There are times we call them the fall of life, when things appear to be falling apart. And you're wondering what's going on here. And there are times that we call the summer of life. This is harvest season. Now, your understanding of how to master the seasons of life is what puts you in command. In my scripture, there's a people who call the son of Issachar. The Bible said they, they understood time and seasons and what happens, they were in command. You can only gain command in life when you understand the season. There's a time to gather in information and build capacity in your area of calling. If it's time you're looking for money, you're in the wrong business, my friend. For a young man out of university, for example, it's not a time to be looking for the highest paying job. No. It's a time to build capacity. If you need to do a free job, get a free job done. Volunteer. Why? You are building a resume. Capacity. So if you don't know that what you are going to be doing, you're going to be looking for the wrong, the right thing in the wrong season. And then life becomes miserable and you're wondering what's going on here. And any information you get there, you jump at it. And then you miss destiny. Nobody here will miss destiny. So you must master the season of life. The spring of life. The winter of life. There are things to do. I always tell people, I say, anywhere you are struggling in any area of life, you are struggling in your health, study health. You are struggling not to build capacity for wealth. Study wealth. There are things to do to grow wealth. There are things to do to grow your, uh, your health. And number two thing you must master, you must master what I call your energy. Many of us are running our energy in the wrong places. You must master your energy. You must be sure that what you are investing your time and resources is showing. If it's not showing, check it. Something is missing. Then you research in that area where you are struggling. And then you build capacity by knowledge, and then experts comes. Number three thing you must master is your finance. Many of us perhaps love the fact that it is okay to be wealthy. But you must recognize that there are things to do to become wealthy. For example, if you spend more than what you earn, that's poverty. Knocking on your door. If you are given to too much sleep, for example, that's poverty. Knocking on your door. If you don't recognize the fact that you must learn what to call the heart of investment, how to multiply returns in your hand, then you're not set for wealth. Now, these are simple rules. I always say anybody that touches money can be super rich if you know what to do. But there are things you must do. You must understand that you have master it. For example, if I check the kind of book you read, I can tell the kind of person you are. Why? What you feed on defines your experience. It defines you as an individual. If you ever I go, ever I get to a, where I get a collection of books called the library, and you read, see the kind of books that I kind of focus on, you can almost predict the kind of person I am. You see books on the economy, for example. Books on wealth, for example. Books on leadership, for example. All of these are meant because it is what you feed on that defines you. The same way we say, show me who you work with, and then I, I, they're your friend, and then I can tell you you are, the kind of book you read defines you, whether you like it or not. So you must master finance. For example, you must recognize the fact that for you to build capacity in wealth, you must be a giver. Not the giving anyhow, but giving into 
in an area that you know is contributing to life. That's why we always at MPA, we always have to give covenantly. What are covenant givings? Number one, to your parents. You must, someone say, oh, I'm thankful my parents are dead. It doesn't matter. <laughs> there will be somebody that you are drawing inspiration from in the father figure. Give to the kingdom. What about kingdom? Kingdom means you are worshiping in the church. You must be part of, your offering must be there. Your tithe must be there. They're promoting something. You're part of it. Kingdom-based giving. Things that advance God's kingdom. Or maybe at the AMP here, you look, you came around and you look at some things and say, oh, can I, can I do this? Can I do that? Oh, there's a fine requirement here. I think I have one waiting in the house. Why not? Now, you must be, every time we talk about economic giants, we talk about givers. Men who gave their way up. I've always said my testimony about wealth is about giving my way up. Giving my way up. That means recognizing the place of giving to climb up in life. Everyone that I know that has value, that holds value for my life, I give them the opportunity to be a blessing in one way or the other. Not because they ask me, but I know that the, the less can only be blessed by the better. Because you can only give your way out of any situation. Anytime these things are tight, for example, and I need to do something. Maybe we're trying to get some few things done and I'm wondering that what is in my hand and what is required, what's in my hand is small. You can't catch, you can't catch it. You give it as a seed. You call it the seed of sacrifice for turnaround experience. There are some of us here who pay a house and need to, who are looking for a, uh, for a miracle job. Sow a miracle seed <laughs> for your career. For that business to expand. Because the Bible said is when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, well, like they have dream. That means there's some things that will be that is requiring that seed in your hand for that breakthrough you are looking for. So you must recognize the place of giving your way up. Anyone you see, call it Job, call it Solomon, they gave their way up. You can't be different. You can't be different. It's a, it's a covenant law. You follow it, you align with it, then he said, Don't you know? He said, Don't you know? Don't you know that I'm the one that gave you the power? What? To get work. Why? That I may establish my covenant. Covenant talks about a lay down rules of engagement. God is only committed until you play your part. And your own part is to give your way up. I thought of many years ago, so I, I have zero concern giving anything. As a matter of fact, I, I don't go to a place where things are free. I check it out. What's going on here? There's nothing free in life. Anything you see, somebody, somebody did it. There's somebody behind it. I, I'll be a fool to think that if I go to a place, they give me a drink free, it's free. It's never free. <laughs> somebody sat down one corner and saw opportunity and dived into it. I've been given to opportunities over and over again. Not the one they announced. But the one I check with my corner of my eye and say, what is missing here? What can I fix? And then boom. I remember one year like that, we were about to buy a brand new bus for one of our service units. And then they were talking. And I said, oh, so what's going on here? They said, well, we need to sow a seed. I said, ah. Then I went, I said, what do I need now? Um, okay, let's see what goes. Could I recognize the season, how, how to master seed planting? Which is the next point. Mastering seed planting. You must know where to plant. It's not everywhere you are, see, just drop and say, they say they are, they are needing money. No, 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 no. Seed planting has to be done with discretion. It has to be done with discretion. Knowing where to drop a seed, whether what they are doing there is it advancing life or is it removing from life. Do they need it? In fact, where they don't need it is where they profit most. Where they will never announce it. And say, well, there's a need here. What do you think? Anywhere they announce it, you check it. There's something wrong somewhere. If, you need to advance, if it's God's work, then you don't need to advance anything. Anybody, he speaks to people. And then as this minister into their spirit man, then everybody jump. Dive into it, knowingly understanding that this is something for a turnaround. So back to the story I was telling you, and I saw this opportunity, and I said, okay. In fact, as a matter of fact, I plan to give more into that, that project. But I learned by experience that anything is finds in your hand part time, that's the seed. Many of us say, well, you know, um, I would like to be part of this. Maybe I'm planning to give 200,000 naira, and then by, by month end, I'll give it. And then it's 10,000 naira in your pocket. That's the seed. 
What makes God turn around our experience is not the volume of what we give. It is the quality of what we give. From a quality heart, a genuine heart. So what happens, I gave that seed, it was a 50,000, uh, thereabout. And all of a sudden, I came back to work on Monday, I think. They said, well, by the way, I think you're supposed to be getting, there's a car outstanding. Your car, you're not supposed to be getting it now, but I don't know. Are you, are you ready? <laughs> and then they gave me a brand new car. <laughs> for a 50K seat into a brand new bus that I want to buy. Not for my use, for kingdom use. There are people that will never give anything unless they benefit from it. That's primary school level of giving. The one that will never have a need in part of it, where it never draws back to you, that's the one that profits most from my experience. At the AMP, most of the time, I was sharing with them, I said, every time they say need or anything, you don't need to talk to us. If we have it, you don't need to pray. Someone met me one year and said, we need a keyboard. I said, what about keyboard? And then he meets me again, we need a keyboard. The one third time, when he called me, he said, you need a keyboard. I, I called him, I said, come. <laughs> if I have keyboard in my house, you won't need to say anything, my friend. <laughs> you don't need to say anything. Then I, I believe God ministered to him. He now kept quiet. <laughs> I said, if you need to be preaching to me at this late stage on to give what is required for this purpose, ah, no, there's something wrong somewhere. So when it was time to get it, and then we told them, and this and this, I said, what, so why do, what happened now? Is it you're saying that made it happen? He said, no. No, the heart has always been there. The heart is what always been there. That's why your heart defines your life. Your heart defines your life. If you see a man producing good results, he has a good heart. If you see a man producing results that are not enviable, check it. It's a wrong heart. I don't need a wrong heart. A wrong heart is when you rejoice with those that are making it. When you rejoice with others who are breaking forth. Because you, you, you know your, your own turn is coming. So you master the seasons of life. You master uh, your energy. Don't go anyhow, anywhere, because it's, you have energy. No. The day I saw, for example, that how Bible says we will be here 120, then I know that can be everywhere, anytime, anyhow. I'm going to conserve energy. Because, okay, you are not skilled, anointed to the teeth. You are 40 years old, you are dragging. How bad? For running around town? <laughs> you can't be everywhere in life and make it. Those who are, have you ever seen a great man on the streets walking up and down? No. They are always one thing, men of one thing, one thing. You can't find them on the street anyhow. They are focused on what they are called to do. And they stay there. And then people start hitting from far and near. See that man. Where is he? You can't find them on the street. So when you are all over the place, check it. You are not set for greatness. Those who are set for greatness, they find their space. They have the mastery of the variables of life. And then they are in command. Now, why am I sharing some of these fundamental things with us? Is because our coming together at the AMP as a worker or as any level of the AMP is because, you know, we are sent to a continent of Africa. And Africa ordinarily is today ascribed as the third world. Now, but the reality is that what we change it from third world into the fourth world, thank you, is our understanding of mastering the variables of our time, of our energy, of the seasons of life, and making sure that you recognize that until when the more knowledge you gather in an area, you are, you are weak, strength won't come. And it's a strength that you and I use in it to prepare. My prayer is that you will not labor in vain. And let me say this as I close, that when you master this thing that I'm sharing with you, it shows in the results you generate. So when there are no results to show, there's something missing somewhere. Look for it. That's why Jesus said the, the, the greatest secret is ask. You have not received it because you have not asked for it. When you ask for it, the word ASK is the most simple miracle anybody can encounter. Ask him. Many of us are looking forward to a thing, but ask what must I do to encounter that blessing I'm looking forward to. And I believe by the Holy Ghost that some of these things will be unveiled to us as we go. And I trust God that, um, you know, for you and for me and for all of us, 
you shall be greater heights in the name of Jesus Christ. I'd like you to put your right hand on your chest and ask the Lord to grace you for mastery over the variables of your life. There are things that you need to be able to be in command over, maybe your health, your career, your business. Lord, empower me to master these things, to take grace to do what is required for all of these things to come to pass. Lord, empower me for mastery over all of this. I don't know a variable area of your life, maybe your health, maybe your career, maybe your business is available. There's something that you need to gain mastery that you are still struggling with. Maybe that expansion for that business. I'd like you to ask God and grace me for mastery over this variable of my life. Jesus. Lord, empower me and grace me, Lord. Thank you and thank you, mighty God. Blessed be your name, Lord. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, like I said, this is one part of a series. It's one of the series that you'll be, will be running um, on our platform. And of course, uh, what are various for us to go ahead, because my understanding of some of these things is that once you master this thing, life becomes meaningful to you. If it's wealth, you understand what it takes. If it's health, you understand what it takes. And then like, you know, bring a different kind of results. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so we'll be doing a toast shortly. And what are we toasting to? We are toasting to new level of exploits. Say amen, please. We are toasting to new level of exploits. And we'll be toasting to a new beginning, as it were. Um, and why all of these are very important is every time you want to do, see new things, you take new steps. New things, new steps. New things, new steps. So, um, this is the first of its kind of AMP workers meeting. And we're trusting God that, um, you know, by the end of today's session, all of us will have been transformed. And everything that you and I need to be able to um, do to be able to make the best of our experience at the AMP um, will be in our hands. Praise the Lord. Okay, thank you.